Time have arrived for Monday, December 15th, 8 o'clock, special meeting of the City Council. Please stand and salute the flag. Gentlemen, uncover, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Mr. Clerk. We have the call of the meeting. That's accepted and placed on file. Ordered that the City Council hereby determines the percentages of the local tax levy in accordance with the provisions of Mass General Law, Chapter 40, Section 56, to be borne by each class of real property as defined in Section 2A of Chapter 59 and personal property. In City, City Council, December 8, 2014, hearing open, Councilor Cruz motion to continue the special meeting on December 15, 2014 at 8 p.m. It was properly seconded. The motion carried <clears throat> by a hand vote. Time having arrived, I hereby declare the continuance of the public hearing open. Uh, those that would like to speak, as I explained it last, uh, last week at this time, uh, the way we do it uh, year to year is those that want to speak about the commercial uh, would speak first and those for residential could speak second. You're going to be limited to three minutes in scope relative to that. Uh, if you do feel that you would like to speak tonight, it is a public hearing by all means. You just need to come up to the podium and sign in, and then we'll have a record of that. And then once you sign in, please state your name for the record. Verbalize that as well. Okay? Is there anyone here? Mr. Um, President. Councilor. Could I ask um, that we, the city councilors can remain... Could I ask that the city councilors could remain seated during this hearing when we uh, ask so our I will, questions? Uh, I, by all means, I will give the professional courtesy councilors. Thank do you. Not, do not uh, stand as typical in city council. We can remain seated tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you, councilor. Yep. Councilors, again, uh, and, and I want to thank the clerk uh, and legal counsel for their efforts last week and as well this week. Uh, remember, councilors. This, uh, and again, we've gone through this year to year. Um, some of the new councils are learning quickly. Uh, this is not a, a, a Q&A. Uh, this is uh, public uh, members come before this body, city council body, and they can speak uh, on their viewpoints relative to this tax matter. Uh, there's no back and forth relative to this. Uh, and again, uh, with that, I'm gonna open it up. If anyone would like to speak, I know the only one who spoke last week with Mr. Cooney <laughs> from the chamber, but if there's anyone here, if Mr. Cooney wants to speak again, by all means, come forward, state your name, please write, sign in as well. Relative to commercial first, please. Yes, Council, my name is Gary Leonard. I'm a resident here in the city of Brockton, and I also am your right-hand man to the boots on the ground for the business here in Brockton. What business asks of this council today is please do not cripple us. We understand there has to be compromise. We accept compromise, but please do not cripple us Keep us all in mind. I'm talking about the mom and pa stores, not big business, but the little guys. Just keep us in mind. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lennon. Could you please sign in, sir? You did. Thank you. Anyone else here in the chamber tonight that would like to speak relative to the commercial? Anyone here about the commercial? Third and final about the commercial. I'm going to move. Mr. Cooney. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just wanted to uh, defer to anyone else uh, because I spoke last week, but. Uh, I'm still here to say the same thing. Uh, we appreciate uh, the additional information that uh, Mr. Condon provided, uh, along with uh, Paul Sullivan, the assessor, and uh, we get a better and a clearer image from the handouts tonight uh, that uh, moving towards a 150 uh, would really send a very positive message to businesses that are here and have invested and uh, would be a telltale for relocation companies looking to compare rates uh, throughout the region and throughout other gateway cities uh, that would make uh, Brockton stand out. Just FYI, last uh, Monday when we were here discussing this, Worcester voted uh, to move to the one threes and uh, they are moving towards tax parity to uh, uh, steadily to get it back onto a level uh, single tax factor. So uh, they are a competitor. Uh, they are a gateway city, and it's interesting uh, that they have had this steady march moving in that direction in order to make them competitive. So, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cooney. Thank you. Anyone else here about the commercial? <clears throat> With that being said, we're going to move on to residential. Anyone here that want to speak uh, about the residential tax? Anyone here in the chamber tonight? Mr. Matter, good evening. Good evening. Uh, my name is Ron Matter. I am a resident. 
homeowner and taxpayer in the city of Brockton. And I'd like to say, read my lips, no new taxes. This is what we were told by the mayor. <coughs> we the people are here again to request that the city council not raise our taxes. <coughs> and I want to know if this is just a one-time deal or it's going to be on our bills every year. The city doesn't have a money problem. Brockton has one of the best bond ratings a city of this size can have. Would someone please exp uh, tell the people how you can get such a good rating if you're not financially stable and have a good cash reserve? You have to have those to get the bond rating that we have. So somebody's not telling somebody. Uh, we've been here for years asking for a complete audit of the finance department by an auditing firm not connected to the city to find out the true finances. But as of this date, I've, uh, uh, our pleas have fallen upon deaf ears. It's time that we the people were told the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Wake up, councilors, before Brockton becomes the next Detroit. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Matter. Anyone else? Anyone else here? Mr. Blasco. <laughs> Good evening, my name is uh, Jim Bosco. I'm a resident of Ward 4 in the city of Brockton. And after watching the budget hearings, I had, uh, in, in June, I had a few questions. I heard during the budget hearings at the end of June in 2014, the CFO said there was $13 million left over as free cash, money not spent. I heard during the hearing that the $13 million went into the retirement fund. The CFO stated that there was, it was not a requirement, but it was a big place to park it. It appeared that the CFO or the mayor decided that all the money would go into the retirement fund. But I question, could some of the money go towards some desperate needs, such as a fire truck, police car, roof repairs at some of the firehouses, or some road repairs? I am not opposed to it going into the retirement fund, but as a resident, I would like to see a discussion on it so if some of this money could be used in such a fashion. Mr. Mayor, at the city council meeting, it was stated that auction sale of city property has raised close to $1 million. Where is that money going? After the beginning, at the beginning of this year's budget for the school department, was facing a major program and staff reduction due to lack of money in its budget to the tune of 94 teachers and many others. I understand that no teachers were lost and many programs were also retained. And my question is, where did the money come from? I understand the mayor is asking taxpayers for additional money to be used by the law department to fight a lawsuit from the power plant want, uh, from the power plant wanting to do business in Brockton. The CFO said when setting the budget, the city estimate it would see approximately 800,000 in new property tax growth this year. But when estimating receipts were certified by the state Department of Revenue, the growth came higher at 1.4 million. Mr. Mayor, it sounds like you already have enough money for the law department, but are using this tactic of raising taxes as, a, as leverage to settle a lawsuit. Settling lawsuits and allowing corporations to sue their way into Brockton may open the door for many other businesses, like casinos or any other business and residents would have no say in what goes into their neighborhoods. If Brockton decides to settle the lawsuit with the power plant and agree to sell sewer water as part of that settlement, that means that Ward 3 and Ward 4 residents, whose property values will go down as a result of 2 million gallons of sewer water used in the cooling towers being released into their neighborhoods. Residents who may want to sell their homes but can't find buyers may find suing the city as the only option. Decreased home values means less tax revenue from this part of the city, and the rest of the residents may have to pay higher taxes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bosco. 
Uh, members of the audience, anyone else here want to go on record and state anything relative to the tax matter? Madam? Good evening. Good evening. My name is Jeannie Falcone. I've lived in the city for 40 years, and I did not come prepared to speak tonight. But with this issue, I feel that I am compelled to do so. Uh, my husband and I are living on Social Security. We've had a very nice life living in Brockton. A lot of nice promises that Brockton was going to come back, which it hasn't, but I understand this is the age that it's in. I do also understand that the state has uh, put some hardships on the cities by cutting back their funding. But at the same time, I'm not getting any more money. The city is top heavy with pensions. You're all familiar with that. We're not. We don't have that. When we get a raise from our Social Security, we're lucky if we get $20 a month. You try living on a $20 raise for the way the economy is going, you're saying the taxes are going up. Last June, I mean, we were fear of our life, okay, when we came to this meeting. I kept my mouth shut there, and I did not say a word, but I feel compelled to do so at this time. We do not have it. Now, I'm sure if I said to these people, my answer to you is no, no. You're, you're used to crunching numbers. Go back to crunching those numbers, okay? You people made a lot of mistakes with pensions and writing out union contracts, and I have no problem with union. I used to belong to them. But at this time, I cannot support it anymore. I'm looking for someone to support me. I'm 73 years old, and I'm looking for a job. Would you like to hire me in the city hall? I'd love to have a job. So that's the only way I can make it. Then I could pay your taxes. But I thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Tonko. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else here in the chamber want to speak to this body? Uh, we do have Mr. Paul Sullivan, the assessor, and Mr. Jay Connor, the CFO, uh, counselors. If no one else is going to be speaking tonight, I'd invite uh, Mr. Connor uh, up to the podium. Um, we do have some, uh, some projections given to us tonight by Mr. Sullivan's office um, before us. Uh, for those councils that haven't served in this body before, uh, typically uh, we would ask uh, Mr. Conan and his capacity as CFO uh, to explain this to us in detail, uh, both on commercial and residential side, and then and then that's when uh, we're able to to kind of delve into it. Mr. Conan, thank you. <laughs> I'll just be really brief. Um, basically, your, your decision tonight isn't on what appropriation should be. The decisions have already been made. City's values have already been approved by the Department of Revenue. Uh, so you're really just deciding how much of that uh, tax levy is divided between the residential and commercial uh, sectors. Uh, uh, Mr. Cooney has asked for us to move from the present factor, which is 1.56, back toward 1.5. Um, I'm sympathetic to that request, but I also think the councilors have to be aware that the city's residents are also in strained financial circumstances, so I would not make a recommendation that you go all the way to 1.5 from where you are. If you want to make a nod in that direction, I think a small movement perhaps to 1.54 uh, is all I, I would recommend, but at least it is a, a, an indication that we understand that by having a healthy business uh, community in Brockton, it means that there is an ability for the residents to pay less because there's an ability to shift some of the tax levy from the residents to the businesses. You don't want to kill the goose that laid the golden egg, but it's a difficult time for many, many citizens in Brockton, as I think you, you're aware from what you've heard tonight. So my recommendation would be, if you're inclined to listen to Co Chris Cooney's argument, and I think he's got some merit to it, I wouldn't move far. I'd maybe go to 1.54. If you look on the um, on the exhibit that uh, was handed out by Paul uh, with the present levy at $118,661,000. Uh, doing that would be a raise in the average tax bill of about 1.9%, and it would be a raise in the uh, uh, commercial uh, rate, it would be a slight reduction in their rate, so, in their bill. So that, that's my recommendation. I take questions if you got them, but I, I wouldn't Council, move on. Any questions for the CFO? Mr. Monahan? Yes, sir. Mr. Connor, what was last year's um, commercial rate? The last year's um, rate? Yeah, I uh, see it on Paul, here. do you have a 31? Come up here so you're not yelling at I think he said 33.96. 33.96, all right, we didn't have that. 33.96. Okay. And a, and a factor of 1.4 would make the uh, commercial rate uh, 33.45. Okay, thank you. 
Councilors, any questions for Mr. Kahn and or Mr. Sullivan? Cruz? No. Mr. President. Ms. Dubois. I make a motion to set the tax rate at 1.56. Can I do that now or do I have to wait for the hearing to be closed? I have to close the hearing, Council. I'm sorry, I apologize. <laughs> Council, does anybody here have any questions for either Mr. Sullivan or Mr. Kahn? None? Do you, Councilor Denapoli? Do you yes, have a question for this? Yes, Mr. President. Okay. Good evening, Mr. Sullivan. Good evening, Councilor. We, we spoke briefly, and I know we want to do, um, of course, we want to do the right thing for the city, and we have to move forward. Um, the commercial tax rate is very high for the commercial people. Um, you know, right now it's 33.96, and on the homeowners, right now it's 18 dollars and 13 cents. Correct. Correct for fiscal okay. year 14. Now, now looking at this factor here that, that you propose and you did a great job at it uh, because of the revaluations and <coughs> the homes and the businesses values have gone up, everybody, the whole chart, everybody's going to see a small increase. It's not right. a large increase. Now, the increases on the left-hand side, I'll give you an example. If we leave the factor the same at Council Dubois at 156, the rate would go from $18.13 to $18.15, which is two pennies. Correct. For the per homeowners. thousand, per thousand valuation. Okay. Now, their yes. increase would be $37.87 per year, or is that quarterly? It's for the year. For the year. Okay. Now, if we go to page two, in the commercial rate, if we leave that, it would drop to $33.80, which is a deduction of about nine cents. Right? Correct. And they would see an increase of $59.14. Correct. Okay. I, <clears throat> I know I'd like to move it. You move it up, you move it down. The, the homeowners are going to get hit with a, a couple of bucks more. The businesses will save. Well, now let me ask you a question. If we, if we went to 154, okay, the homeowners, the rate would change going to $18.28. Correct. Which is an increase of... Uh, $60.17. No, okay, yeah, $60.17. So the rate would change about, uh, what, 10, 11 cents? 15 cents. 15, 15 cents. cents. And then the businesses, the rate would go down to $33.45. So their rate would drop about 40 cents. And their increase would be $39.19. Be a decrease. I'm sorry. A, a, in parentheses, decrease. A, de a decrease of $39.19 because it's in parentheses. I'm oh, sorry. Okay. So I was get that's that. The first, that's the first decrease. That would be the, a, a, a decrease. Correct. Okay. Um, now, do you recommend us? going in that direction where the, the businesses would pay their, their values, of course the value goes up, so they would see a, a decrease. Where does that leave the city with money taken in? First, first off, Council, I can't recommend something, but the levy has already been approved. We do have a single tax rate. This is just a shift of the factor. So that levy is going to be received. It makes no difference on what the, the money stays factor the same. Is. The homeowners pay the difference. Correct. That's it's a we'll shift. The chart works. You're, you're, you're giving a benefit to the residential. Right. And you're shifting it to the commercial tax base. Okay. Otherwise, the single rate would be twenty-one dollars and seventy-two cents. Okay. I, okay. I follow that. And I thank you for that, that information. It, and that would be. On the residents, it would be a $650 increase if we had a single rate. <clears throat> that would be on the top of page eight. At a factor of one, which would be a, a factor single of rate. one. Correct. Yes. Well, we'll never go there. Okay. <laughs> I don't think. I, I, I don't. No, think I, don't, I, don't <laughs> I don't think. I don't think we're going there, Mr. Sullivan. Okay. I thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you, Council Denapoli. Council Rodriguez. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Conn, I just have a quick question in terms of. To explain this whole thing about the um, this rate factor, because if, if, if I'm I'm seeing this as a as a question or having this as a question, I'm sure 
some of the folks that are watching us will probably have the same issue with the taxpayers will have the same issue. How come that when the, uh, when the factor goes down for the residents, the rate goes up, and yet when the factor goes down for the commercial, the rates go down? Well, the, uh, if you mean by going from 1.56 to 1.54, that's the factors going down, and the residential tax bill would increase because of that, because you would be shifting less of what would otherwise be residential taxes onto the commercial. So at one, a factor of one, there's no shift. At a factor of 1.6, is that the maximum we could do? 165? 1.66, under the law, that's the maximum we could do. That's the most you could shift, but that's basically a major shift of what's otherwise residential taxes to the commercial sector. So as you reduce that factor of 1.66 back to one, you're raising residential taxes by doing it each time you do it, and you're lowering commercial taxes by doing it. Because as Paul said, the levy's the same. We've already got a levy which is approved by the Department of Revenue and spending, all that's done. So now it's just a question. How much of that $118.661 million is going to be borne by the residential sector and how much by the commercial sector? The factor just determines how much of what should be otherwise residential taxes is shifted under the law to the commercial taxpayers. And the question is what's in the best interest of the city to do that? I think everybody realizes you want to have a commercial sector which is healthy uh, because having that sector healthy allows you to do this shifting. It makes for city services available that otherwise wouldn't be available. Uh, also, we compete, as uh, uh, Chris Cooney has said, in a lot of the surrounding towns, they have a single rate because they don't have as large a business factor so sector. So that means that their rates are automatically lower for commercial. So that's the argument for doing a, the commercial business as a favor. At the same time, you have a residential population, many of whom are not in a strong economic position to pay higher taxes. I think you've heard that. We all recognize that. That's why I'm saying you've been... Um, helpful to the commercial sector in small steps over the last four or five years because I think the factor did get too heavy to the commercial. But I wouldn't move very aggressively because you've got to be aware that the residents who are paying these taxes, many of them are in difficult circumstances and simply find it hard to find the additional money. So $60, some persons might say that's not much money. Some other people, it's a budget buster. That's why I say if you go at all, I'd only go to maybe one five four. So, So you're basically recommending to to us that we should go to one, uh, one from, one from five one four? five six to one five four. I, I wouldn't increase the factor, and I wouldn't reduce it by much more than going to one five four. I, I, I'd stay right in that very narrow range because it sends a message to the commercial. We hear your your, your plea, but in the meantime, um, <laughs> uh, the way this country's economy has recovered from the recession has been very very uneven. Yeah. Uh, there are communities where its um, its economy has improved much better than these urban centers and working class communities which haven't seen the same benefit. And I think we have to be realizing that as much as it might help the commercial sector now, we can't be too aggressive in how we move in their direction because of the residential population in this city and its ability to pay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Conan. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Council Rodriguez. Councilors, any other questions for either Mr. Sullivan or Mr. Conan? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, anyone else here in the chamber want to come before us and talk about this matter? Anyone else here in the chamber? Third and final time. Anyone here in this chamber want to speak about this matter? I'm going to close that part of the hearing. Councilors, I'm going to entertain a motion now. Um, Mr. President, mm -hmm. Council. I make a motion that we um, accept 1.56 as the task factor. Second. Second. Motion was made, it was properly seconded uh, to accept 1.56 as the tax factor. Uh, we need to do a roll call vote relative to that. Mr. Clerk, if you could please read the roll. Azar. Yes. Cruz. No. Benafley. No. Dubois. Yes. Ioneri. Yes. Monahan. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Stewart. Yes. Studinsky. Yes. Sullivan. No. Seven in the affirmative, three in the negative. Counts as that passes. The, uh, the factor is deemed as 1.56. Councilors, due to the fact that um, yeah. we're under a time stipulation from the Department of Revenue, Mr. Sullivan has uh, conveyed to me that we need to do actions tonight relative to signing certain matters. So I entertain a motion relative to 
If anybody wants to make a motion on reconsideration. Take a brief recess. Oh, Mr. President, I move to take a brief recess. Okay.
Back in the session, councillors. <coughs> Councilors, the, uh, the order now comes before us uh, for adoption purposes. I'm going to have Mr. Clerk please read the order. In Council, uh, December 15th order, that the City Council hereby determines the percentages of the local tax levy in accordance with the provisions of Mass General Law, Chapter 40, Section 56, to be borne by each class of real property as defined in Section 2A of Chapter 59 in personal property. Residential, 64. 0.6026, commercial 25.2461, industrial 4.5665, personal property 5.5848, the factor for such classification shall be 1.56. Councilors, the matter now comes before us uh, as adoption with a roll call vote. Mr. Clerk, if you could please read the roll. Azak. Yes. Cruz. No. Annapolis. Yes. Why? Yes. Ionary. No. Monaghan. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Stewart. Yes. Studinsky. Yes. Sullivan. No. Seven in the affirmative, three in the negative. All right, it's hereby confirmed. The factor is set at 1.56. Any consideration? Councilors, anybody want to reconsider this? Mr. President, I Council. move for reconsideration in the hope that it does not prevail. Second. Second. Thank you. Motion made properly second in reconsideration. Hopes it doesn't prevail. All in favor of reconsideration, please raise your hand. All opposed. Reconsideration does not prevail. Council, uh, the matter is uh, hereby adopted, and uh, we are now going to go on to agenda item number three on tonight's special meeting. Council Cruz. Uh, Mr. President, I'd make a motion that the City Council adjourn into executive session to discuss litigation matters. Second. <coughs> Councilors, a motion has been made, properly seconded, to go into executive se session uh, tonight relative to litigation uh, on the Brockton Power issue. I've never seen um, like that <laughs> I need to read into the record, Councilors, that um, discussion in open session may be detrimental to the City Council public bodies bargaining on litigation position. Councilors, we're going to be going into executive session at this time. We will not be coming back in here into open session, Councilors. We're going to have executive Indeed. session in our, uh, in our council room over there. Thank you very much. We need a roll call vote, I believe. Need to take a roll call vote on that. I'm sorry. Dennis, roll call thanks. vote relative to going into executive session. Azak. Yes. Cruz. Yes. Annapolis. Yes. Wild. Yes. Pioneering. Yes. Monaghan. Yes. Rodriguez. Yes. Stewart. Yes. Studinsky. Yes. Sullivan. Yes, we hereby go into executive session. We will not be coming back in open session.